Welcome to In the Light. This is Angie Hillman. This is uh, my new podcast. And I thought it was appropriate for this first podcast to have as my guest today, um, who I like to call my school daughter, um, Kelsey Fay. She is a graduating senior at Oakland University here in Michigan. And uh, she is an acting major, and I couldn't be more proud of her. And currently, um, in case you've been hiding under a rock, we are all in um, social distancing slash quarantine mode. And um, so Kelsey and I have been talking every now and again about, uh, you know, what we're doing to kind of get through the whole thing. How are you doing over there, Kelsey? I'm doing just dandy, which is kind of a lie, but we're hanging in there. Yeah, we're hanging in there. Um, so how is it going at OU? What, what has changed so far with this uh, zombie apocalypse? Well, it's crazy because people started, we got the email on Thursday evening, um, last Thursday, and it said that all classes are going online. It didn't say we had to move out, but before that email even went out, people were moving out in droves. Sure. Um, it was insane. And then as soon as that email came out, everyone started leaving. Like, of course they are. So what's um, your plan? My plan is I stayed a full week and then some. It's now Saturday. I leave tomorrow and... Um, you know, uh, my roommate leaves Monday and my other roommate left Friday, no, Thursday. And so we've just, uh, my roommate and I have been just keeping each other busy. We've been drawing, um, coloring, listening to comedians, um, watching movies, going on walks. Yeah, I think there's been a lot more walking going on during Which this time. Which is good. And you know, this whole thing is really good for our environment. Like less cars being run, like it's... It's just really good for us. Well, you know, and <laughs> you know, we've been talking lately about, you know, as artists, how it's really, you know, a top priority for us to connect with people and to create art in whatever form that happens to be, whether you're an instrumentalist, whether you're a singer, an actor, a writer, whatever it happens to be, um, that we've got to create some art. So I know you and your roommate, Annika, um, have been doing um, some things over there. What um, What is the, the latest over there that you've been doing to keep yourselves occupied? Yeah, so we, well, I kind of came up with the idea that we were going to come up with a word or a phrase that we could then take away and go ahead and write about it. Um, Annika writes plays. She has a full-length play out right now that she's getting read at festivals and stuff. It's called The Trial of Mira Vance by Annika Anderson. Check it out if you can. Um, and she's she she does plays. I do monologues and poems mostly. Um, although I did write We Willy Stinky, and if you want to read that, um, it's available upon request. From- I mean, We Willy Stinky <laughs> is definitely um, a piece to behold. I mean, it really takes you down quite a a rabbit hole. Uh, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's something. It got me a B plus and that's all that matters. I mean, that's important. Um, but what I, what I did is I came up with the word trapped and I did that because back in high school, back in your class, we had to do that prompt and it was an improv thing. And I figured, well, I never wrote it down. So let me take it and do what I want to now. Now let's let me just uh, fill the listeners in on that. Um, yes, I, I'm an acting teacher, and so one of our exercises in class um, it's about junior year, and then we repeat kind of a, a similar thing in senior year. But they come up with uh, students come up with a backstory, and all I give them is the prompt trapped. So they've got to figure out um, you know how where they're trapped, um, why they're trapped who they are in that situation of being trapped. Um, we do, you know, what's the temperature outside? Where, what kind of space are you in? And they, there's no props or costumes or sound effects or anything used. You're just on a stage and you go for two minutes um, until you hear that bell ding and you are trapped in that space. And it's very intense. So you were thinking of, of that as you were coming up with this. Yeah, that's great. And so both of you came up with a little bit of like a piece of art. Yeah. Um, and I know we, 
spoiler alert, recorded this before, <laughs> but it yes. didn't work out. Um, but what I said last time is I remember something. I don't remember what I did, but the one that stuck out to me, and this is important because it goes with what the one I wrote, was the being stuck under a bunch of dead bodies. Yes. Like, and we can't that. remember who that is. Who did that? No, if you're out there and you did that, props to you and love yeah. it. And then there was, a, there was a kid who did, he said to me, this was years ago, and he said, I want to, I want to be trapped underwater. Like, I think that something is tied to my ankle and it's very heavy and I can't get above the water. And I said to him, you know, kudos to you for thinking of this, but I don't know how that's going to play, you know, on stage. Can you, can you make this work? Because I don't want you to be up there flailing about and it's not working for you. I want to make sure that he said, Miss Holman, I, I know I can do this. And, and so he gave me kind of his backstory and he said, I have a, a technique I want to use. And I said, you know what, go for it. And I got to tell you, that's one of them that I remember all of these years is that one um, because it made me actually hold my breath. That's how, how you know, impactful it is when he did it. So um, yeah, it is, it's an awesome prompt. Um, and at the end of the show, I'm going to have you, if you don't mind, perform that for us. Ooh, of course I will. Okay, because we love a good Kelsey R. Fay performance, so we appreciate that. So you're, um, did OU hold off on graduation, or how's that going to go? Yeah, so we actually got lucky. They postponed ours until late August. A lot of schools, I think including MSU, got theirs just completely canceled. And I was going to be devastated if that happened because I kind of like the pomp and circumstance of it all. Like I really liked it when I graduated from high school and my family got to see that accomplishment, but this is an accomplishment that, you know, we've paid for and like I've worked four, five times over than I did in high school for Are you. Are you first generation college student? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my brother is also graduating at the same time though. So it's like, there's, blurred lines there. That's fantastic um, though. I mean, it's, it's a huge accomplishment. And of course you want that to be celebrated. And um, I hope that can happen for you in August. Are you going to decorate your, your cap? Yeah. So originally I wanted it to say into the woods and out of the woods from the musical into the woods, but I figured to keep it more acting major based, even though I wasn't a lot of musicals at, uh, at OU, including into the woods, which would be special, but I really liked the three words end of play it happens in every play I read that's how they end it it says blackout and then end of play and I'm going to put it in brackets and it's going to be um I'm thinking black and white I don't know if I want it to be like very colorful um but it's going to be like really simple end of play because this is like the end of my four-year play I think that's fantastic and yeah. I know you're on to really big things I just feel that for you um, especially writing. I'm really excited to share that in a little bit. I really am. Yeah, I think that, you know, during this time when we're all taking a minute and we're all pausing in our own ways um, and trying to kind of, you know, weather this very strange atmosphere that we're in right now in our country, in the world, um, you know, I think that having some some things to do and being artists, you know, sharing our craft with other people. Um, I have a friend, my friend Sherry, uh, her daughter, Sydney, she's, she's every day, she dresses up in her princess costumes from Disney. She's got a little area that she has and she um, does, you know, storytelling and as like Princess Belle, as so Ariel, you know, things like that. And yeah. um, the kids can, you know, do like FaceTime with her. And um, so, you know, that's, you know, and she's from Siena Heights. She's also a, a musical theater major. Um, and, and so, she, you know, she's doing things like that there. I know that many of my students are you know, artist uh, with, with the pencil, you know, sketching, yeah. um, painting. Um, I tried doing a little painting the other day and, uh, you know, I just think it's important for us to kind of share what we have, you know, and the Broadway community is coming together as well. Oh yeah. It's as they always do. Right. And, um, and a uh, Hillman original painting is special. <laughs> well, you no, know, I've got three of them in my room currently. They're not hung up because I'm moving, but. Well, I enjoy me some painting. Let me tell you, I, I think that, you know, it really calms me, um, 
you know, and, and I have to say too, as a very busy person, as a person who is, you know, scattering about all the time, I, I thrive on that. You know, I, I, you know, a lot of us do the type a, you know, this has really been a time that I've had to be okay in the quiet and in the pause area. So I find, you know, painting does help me do that a whole lot. Reading also helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Binging. Oh yeah. What are you watching? Well, right now, um, Miss Kelly Eddy has me watching, um, a series starring, um, Jonathan Groff. Oh, love him. Listen, Jonathan Groff is so good. I know. I mean, he is fantastic. What is the name of the show? Now I can't even think. I'm only on episode four. Um, I'm going to have to look it up as I go. Have you been binging anything lately? Um, well, I have been watching Schitt's Creek. Oh, I love that show. You just love. Um, I've been- I've So been- funny. I know. I've been watching movies, though, with the roommates. Um, we watched Hook the other night. We watched a Marie Antoinette movie, which I don't oh, yeah. recommend um, with Kirsten Dunst. I don't like it. I'm going to be yeah, honest. Well, I think I tried to warn you about that one, but it's okay, Kelsey. Sometimes <laughs> um, you don't listen. Wait, <laughs> pausing. Uh, the show is called Mindhunter. I'm, Mind- not gonna say, I'm not going to say it's a light show because it's about uh, serial killers, <laughs> but, but, but it, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't, I would say it's not recommended for people maybe, um, 16 and below, but it's, it's, you know, I like to binge a show, you know, so I'm giving it a try. And that's on Netflix. I think so. Yeah. Nice. So I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet. It's a little slow for me, but I do like Jonathan Groff. So theater kids. If you haven't discovered The Descendants, discover it. It's a Disney Channel original movie, The Descendants. There's one, two, and three. And it's the, um, this is a completely, it's, anyway, watch it. It's um, their musical numbers. It's a, it's a musical movie and it's on Disney Plus. It's amazing. Now, I'm going to tell you, I do believe that my right-hand man, Eli Cavallero, I do believe he told me that there's going to be a stage production of The Descendants. I think I just heard that, Kels. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to verify that. Yeah, I think there's going to be a a stage musical of that. It's um, for this, just really quick. For those of you that don't know, it's about the Disney villains' kids and what they're up to. And it's, oh, my gosh, it's so good. And I watched it the other night again, and I just fell in love with it again. It's, It's nice, clean, family fun. See, that's better than what I said. If you're looking for that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't watch what I said. Only, only if you're 17 and up. For Kelsey, the Descendants would be a good way to go. Yeah. And there's Descendants 1, Descendants 2, and Descendants 3? Yes, I've only seen the first one. I okay. will say that, but it's really good. Okay, all right. I'm a fan of that. I'll have to check it out because I haven't yet um, delved into that little... Do you not have Disney Plus? I, I do not have Do Disney. My login? <laughs> well, I have someone's login. Is that legal? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble on our first podcast here. <laughs> I sure really don't. Um, I want to say another thing, which is uh, the creation of the love bead. So this is a thing that I created years ago. And um, they're just, you know, little clay beads. And it came about at a time where I wanted to you know, my kids, I have a lot of anxious kids, a lot of kids who just need a little extra oomph during the day. And so just, it came to me to make these little, they're just like little clay beads and they're usually smiley faces. There's been hearts sometimes, the occasional flower when I first you started. only make heart, uh, hearts now? Or no, I only make smileys now. I don't make as many hearts anymore. What about peace signs? I do, I do those. I do those. And really the love beads are, and I'll do a whole podcast about the love beads, but, um, Anyway, I, I give them out to my, my kids um, when they're feeling a little anxious or if they need a little oomph in their day, a little good juju. Um, and also, they're all over the, the world because I, I travel the world. So I put them places for love beads travel hashtag. Um, and Kels, I know you did a little bit of that today on the OU campus. Yeah, I did. Um, it gave me an excuse to get out and um, say goodbye to the campus that I've so lovingly grown up on for four years. Um, I put some in the theater building because that's where I spend the most of my time. 
And I actually got a really cute response from one of the accompanists that works at OU. He was like, if I find one of those, I'm going to burst out into tears and remember how much I miss the senior class. Okay. And that was like really nice to hear. And I put one on the clock tower and I put one by um, Bear Lake. Yeah, that's the stuff right there. You know, that's kind of why they were created. So I love that you, I love that you did that. Oh, um, and I gave one to my former director and professor Caro. And he was, I was like, I have something for you. And he was like, you're going to have to douse it in bleach first. <laughs> but he took it. He took it. He was a good sport. Oh, that's so good. I love that you did that. Well, I'd like to, um, I'd like to share your piece if you don't mind, Kels. For sure. Okay. So this is, um, this is going to be Kelsey's piece. She'll, she'll read it live here on the podcast. Um, and again, this came out of the prompt of trapped. Um, and this took you about, we said about 20 minutes. Yeah. About writing. You know, and what, you know, once you're a writer, I mean, you really can, you know, if you get an idea, an inspiration, you really can just go for it and write it. Um, and I'm sure there wasn't a ton of edits in this either, right? No, just a few lines here and there because it started off as something different and changed. Um, but I would, I would encourage you guys out there to get together with some friends, not like physically together because that's not allowed, but get together over Zoom or um, FaceTime with some friends and challenge each other to do some writing because it really did help pass the time. And then you get to share your writing with people and you get to hear theirs. And it's, it's a special experience sharing writing um, and it passes the time. Absolutely. And I will say that, you know, writing for the stage is a lot different than writing for, you know, an English class, you know, things like that composition class. You've got to make sure that it's flowing, you know, and that when you're speaking it, it, it really flows out of you. Um, and that's the difference between writing for, you know, print and then writing for the actual stage. So, and Kelsey really is a master of that. So this is uh, her inspired, inspired piece, um, Trapped, and there is music under it as well. Yes, I hope you can hear it. If you can't and you like the song or want to know the song, it's called And She Was by Carlos Sipa. Okay, Kelsey, whenever you're ready, um, this is Kelsey's Trapped Inspiration piece. All right, here we go. Rain falls outside. I can smell it. Like metal, like sky, like spring. I can hear it like drums, like the first rhythm, like a heartbeat. What's that like? Do you remember? Could you tell me? I'm confined. Confiding in this wooden box is how I passed the years, wondering what I could have been. A tree? At least then I could feel the rain. A place on the mantle, at least then I could see the rain. Spread in the dew of the field where we shared our first kiss, at least I could taste the rain. Rain is renewal. It's renaissance, it's rehab, it's rebirth. It can't reach me, so I destroy, destruct, damage, decay in this wooden box. They so lovingly picked what would become my confidant and best friend, the grooves in this wooden box. My friend was expensive, no doubt. You can't put a price on comfort, they said. Oh, I heard. I hear, I smell, I taste, I love, I lose, I lost. How I want to travel, want to know what you're doing, want to tell you I don't resent you for not making me into a tree, want to say though that maybe if you did, you could water me and watch me grow again. Man, how we've grown, huh? I thought we'd grow old together, thought we'd laugh at our grandkids together on that stupid front porch that everyone talks about even though it's New York and the next best thing is a balcony that barely fits my size 10 feet. If you were here now, we could dance in the rain. It's cheesy, but I've always wanted to do it. I used to complain about the rain, how it made driving harder, days gloomier, nights louder, but now to be able to taste it, to feel it one more time, to feel you one more time, I would give anything to be washed clean and be delivered back home to you. So don't scoff at the rain, thank her. Because thanks to hearing her today, my love for you is reborn. My love for you is alive, although my heart beats no longer. When it did, it did so for you. Rain falls outside. That reminds me of where I am, but also where I have come from. Rain falls outside. I fall for you inside. Again and again. 
Oh, and that's why we do this, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we write. That's why we perform. Um, beautiful, Kelsey. Thank you. Really, really beautiful. What's your process for, for writing? Um, my process is a lot of staring at a wall. <laughs> and um, I've actually been listening to this piece of music um, the past few days because to me it's just it's how I feel right now. And I just came across it by typing in classical music on um, Spotify yeah. and it just kind of came up and I was like, you know, this has a lot under underlying in it. And so I was listening to it, staring at a wall, um, as I did in high school all the time too. I would just mere cat at a wall. I remember this. And just stare until the first few lines come to me and it would happen to be rain falls outside because you can hear in the audio some, um, something that sounds like rain, at least to me. So, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And when you're writing, can you picture yourself performing it? Yeah, I, I can. I think that's, um, that's what drives it. You know, you have to picture yourself um, and hear yourself saying it. That's why I like the whole, like, um, I love, I lose, I lost, because um, it's that repetition and it's pleasing to the ear. Um, so that's what I think of. I think of yeah, you definitely, all your pieces really are really rhythmic, rhythmically enjoyable. I try. Is that a phrase? Rhythmically enjoyable? <laughs> it just, there's a rhythm to it and it's, um, you know, it just is, it's really, um, interesting to listen to and it just, it puts you right there and it's, it's a huge talent. So thank you for sharing that with us today, Kelsey. Thank you. Well, I think that's going to wrap up today. Um, thank you for being on my first podcast, Kelsey Fay. Of course. Thank you for having me. And I really hope that you will come back and maybe share some more of your pieces with us. Yeah, sure. And your life observations as a graduated uh, college student out looking for a job as an actor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, don't you worry. There's jobs out there, my friend. Um, and, uh, you know, as always, I just love you. Love you too. All right. Well, thank you for, uh, for coming uh, to, on the program. And we will talk to you next time when we learn more about how to get in the light. Happy quarantining.